Councillor Greater X. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I think it is remiss that the report comes back from the Reset and Recovery Board rather than the Cabinet, because it's up to the Cabinet to give political direction as to what they want. Secondly, I think the fact that the committee didn't ask for a second um, cent to be opened is, is, I think, poor communication on the part of either the Chair or whoever, because I you know, it was clear what the committee wanted, which was somewhere more appropriate. And the point, I think, centred around the fact that we've got a suite of interview rooms downstairs. And I know I've supported constituents, I'm sure others have, where you can go along with them and sit there with an officer and it's private. And, you know, particularly when you're discussing benefits and circumstances, you know, it's not easy to sit somewhere where you could feel that it's not private. So I think it's very disappointing that... Uh, this has been allowed to be sort of run into the bureaucratic sand rather than actually taken seriously. And I would urge the chair to take that up with the leader for the future. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I would uh, certainly amplify the uh, comments made by uh, council people. Um, the other thing that worries me is the reliance we place on um, the data, uh, the statistics. You're only counting the number of people who actually go in and are reported. What about all those who see the venue and don't bother going in? I suspect there are a lot more of those than there are of people actually going in. And I think the, the fact that it's in such an open venue, there is no privacy, puts an awful lot of people off before they even get to the desk. So I'd like really to, um, to ask that we don't always rely on stark statistics because they don't always tell the truth. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, I agree with John uh, from a certain point of view. I think it was Winston Churchill said, statistics are there. It's like a drunk man leaning against a lamppost. They're for support, not illumination. Um, yeah, it's, we've, had, we've carried data for a long, long time with you know, uses of receptions, and we've watched the data, you know, the numbers using it come down and down and down as we've driven people online. And it has been a policy of this council for a long time to drive people online, but not everybody can do that. So... I'm just hearing, because obviously I wasn't at the last meeting, what uh, Councillor People and Councillor Harper have said, that there's been something lost in translation. It's a quick, easy fix. Let's send the recommendation again, and let's communicate it better this time. I'm happy to move. We send it again. We, uh, we communicate that. better. Yeah, let's, let's go fix it. Yep, with the understanding that another means an alternative rather than a second. But I should have thought that was thought clear out of this. Meetings. Yeah, to facilitate private consultation. Yeah, if the rest of the committee is comfortable, I'm comfortable to send you and the chairman away and play with the recommendation to submit it to Cabinet to say what this committee is actually doing rather than as bounce words around now. I think we all know what we're trying to say. And you know, if you, just want, you and the chair want to circulate that to the committee, what we believe the recommendation is, the right wording, we know it's about ensuring the space for people to have those private meetings. We've just got to get the wording right so we can communicate that to Cabinet. I'm, I'm comfortable with that if demo services are. So we've got a wording. We're happy to send it again, which was the proposal, with a guarantee that the chair and yourself make sure the understanding of what was implied was clearer this time. But it's been moved and seconded, Chair. Can I move that it be put to the vote? I say something before we actually take the vote. Chair, under procedural motion, the motion should be put. Um, all I was going to say was rather than saying another venue, could we replace that with more appropriate? A more appropriate venue rather than another venue. Going on uh, what Councillor Cook just says, so b b before I do go to Cabinet, I'd like say before bang bouncing it around here, I will send it. Thank you, Chairman. Um, how well publicised is it where people can go? Because as Councillor Cook said, not everybody has got a computer. Um, if there's a notice on the door, people on the main door, people might not see that. Um, and I think it was Councillor Harper said, people might walk up to the door and walk away again. So how well are we going to publicise where the public can go and um, get their information or sort their problems out how well publicized will that be for people who are not online
Uh, more of a comment, if uh, I may, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, this, this, what we're discussing this evening, I think, you know, I'm speaking to the Governor here on the committee when I say, this is one of, if not the most important thing this Council does. This is something we have to get right. And this Council has a good track record of getting this right. I mean, I, I've been here long enough to remember Operation Turnaround. Do you remember Turnaround, Joe? You know, which was you know, a partnership model launched in Tamworth about sharing information between agencies and getting to the root of problems with young children earlier to stop it progressing to the serious problems. It became the national model within a two, few years. We still do it in a certain way. It's not called Turnaround anymore, but it's still you know, firmly entrenched in the multi-agency partnership. We have a good history of this. And let's recall, as councillors, we take no legal responsibility personally of this, but our brave officers sat opposite, opposite us do, and they do a great job, and I'd like to personally thank them. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> without, as you say, mentioning individuals, I've had over the years a number of cases where we've had to go to the officers and get their assistance and, and investigation, and I think you know, one is reassured to find the depth and thought that goes into some of those cases, particularly where we've worked with the homeless and other vulnerable individuals who you know are desperately in need of the right answers where the right answers can be identified. So I've been very pleased and, and reassured by what's gone on and the fact that the partnership officers have worked so hard. Jackie is the latest of a number of people who've been in that role. She's been in it all through the pandemic. It's been absolutely critical to making sure that we tie in as many supports as possible um, around, and particularly when you come across cases that involve children, you're always concerned, but actually vulnerable adults can be just as exploited and it's really important that we're alert to that. So I'm really pleased that we are. I'm really pleased about the way this report summarises, yes, a great deal of work that's been done, but doesn't minimise the ongoing challenge because as we come out of the pandemic, some things are going to make life harder for vulnerable people rather than easier. And I think it's, it's particularly apposite that we're looking at it now. So I heartily endorse the report. Um, and the work of the officers concerned um, and I just look to that work continuing into the future because it's not going away. The, you know, only the other day I got approached by somebody whose money was being managed by someone else and you, you, you have to dig around a bit to make sure that's okay because you, you don't want them to be more vulnerable than they already are. Um, with regard to modern slavery, I think it's going to be really important as the council goes forward with commissioning a large number of construction programs that we monitor the um, working conditions because the construction industry has at times been associated with modern slavery um, because of course it's easy for people to work um, on sites doing uh, labouring jobs and so on so it'll it's written into our policies that all our suppliers and contractors have to sign up to that but it'd be really important to make sure that we check as we go forward because the scale of the work that's going to go on is, is way bigger than we've had for a very long time and particularly because the council are often the lead letter of the of the contract but that's i'm sure going to be done properly it's just a cautionary thing because it'll be such a bigger part of it as we go forward and i'm um, sadly i'm sure i'm not the only one who read some of the reports about how refugees are exploited and so obviously it'll be really important to make sure that refugees don't end up here having been trafficked. If they come here because they've come here under a scheme and have been offered support and shelter and, and a hope for the future, that's marvellous. Um, but we, we do need to make sure that people aren't trafficked under guise of these schemes. So um, thank you very much, Chair. Utterly happy to move or second report if someone else wants to second it, but I'm happy to move it. It's very, very good.
I was moving the endorsement of the report because I think the the first bit is what we're doing now. So I was moving the the actual endorsement. So, uh, agenda item number eight, update on health related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. Uh, there was a, a written update attached to the agenda pack which provides an overview to the staff's meeting held on the 31st of January 22. Since then there was a further uh, county meeting on the 15th of March. Um, Council Jay isn't here to give the update um, but I'm sure that you've all seen the the update in the agenda pack and do you have any questions regarding that councillor people thank you chair um at a previous meeting where i was substituting councillor jay wasn't here to give the county update and we did raise the question that as his attendance at these meetings has been so thin would the county group seek to have somebody who could make the meetings come because when councillor clements was the health link she always attended um prior to that it was i'm trying to remember is it councillor james chaired the meeting but anyway the, previously the attendance has been councillor ford yeah that's that again somebody who then was able to make the meetings and there's there's not a lot of benefit to having a link person who isn't here so as it's coming up to the end of municipal year can i suggest that the um, six conservative borough members who are also county councillors give due thought to giving the health scrutiny committee the appropriate time and commitment thank you uh yeah um j just to add on on to that uh, i know that the chair has spoken to county and we are awaiting a further response from them in relation to to, to that comment from the previous meeting well the annual meeting's hoving on the horizon so it's the right time to get it changed thank you councillor cook thank you mr chairman happy to move we note and support the actions in these updates anybody second yep hands for yes Uh, agenda point number nine is the forward plan. Uh, has anybody seen anything that they'd like to comment on to bring to the committee? Uh, bearing in mind that this is the last meeting for this year, um, but will obviously be picked up for future committees. Agenda item number 10, so we've got the draft annual report of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee for 21-22. It aims to summarise the work covered by the committee this year. It will be updated following this meeting to cover any relevant items from this meeting. The draft report is here for the committee's consideration. The plan is then to prepare a final version for presentation to full council in the next year. Uh, any comments on that? Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had a good read of it on Friday. However, it's very difficult for me to comment on because this is the only um, meeting of this committee I've sat on this year. So it looks like this committee's got through quite a lot of work. So well done to you all and I I'm happy to support it. But I wasn't part of those meetings, so there's not much more I can say. Councillor People. Uh, I've had about, I think, three appearances here and I would endorse the overall tone and content of the report. And I'm sure. There's no reason for it not to go forward. 
Yeah, I, I, I think what was uh, seen in the report was a lot of time had been given to Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust, which I'm sure we can appreciate is quite an important matter. Um, and that at the end of it, we have managed to make some movement on with the Cabinet's help on looking at getting a, a specific wellbeing portal looked at, uh, which which can only benefit the residents of Tamworth. Um, so, we had Danny... Chair, if I may, on Casper. that particular point, I do think it is a lot of loose ends at the moment, and I think it'd be nice to know you're going to carry that forward because mental health has been such a difficult area and therefore it r requires your continuing focus. And, I've, and I, obviously it's not, I, I don't know who's going to be on the committee next year, um, but, but I feel confident that members like yourself and others I've heard in these meetings understand the importance of mental health and therefore that it will remain a very high priority for this committee. Uh, Councillor Harper first and then Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, Councillor People is absolutely correct in that. We have spent a lot of time um, on mental health issues and we put a lot of importance basically on advertising and promoting, um, which, to be perfectly honest, hasn't achieved um, as much as we'd like to on that, on that score. Um, if people don't know about it, it doesn't matter how good it is. And um, I think next year, or in the, uh, the the next term, that needs to be pressed forward with uh, with even more um, pressure to um, to get something done on that score because it's crucially crucially important, and um, we are aware of it and need to get it sorted. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I just want to echo the points of council people, Councillor Harper. Uh, while it's sometimes easy to sit here and say mental health is not the remit of a district council such as ourselves, it's madness to think that. While we don't have a legal statute duty towards it other than within our safeguarding policies, to ignore it is nonsense. It might be more public health England and the county council's remit, but just, just as a, a daft example, I think things we've learnt as a council over the last 20 years you know, I'll give you a perfect example. Somebody presents themselves at front reception many years ago saying I'm homeless. It's very easy for Tamworth Borough Council to hand over a set of keys to a council house, job done, we've done our bit. Three months later, they're back at reception, I'm homeless. Because we never address the root cause of why we're the homeless. And a lot of it is mental health issues or historic abuse. So for Tamworth Borough Council not to take mental health agenda seriously is a nonsense. So I absolutely want to endorse what the two gentlemen said. We, we've got to keep this top of the agenda. Councillor Grosjoix. Yes, at a previous meeting, um, regarding the um, promotion of this, uh, I'm sure that the guy who attended this meeting said there was going to be a two-year time scale um, before this information could be put in leaflet form and card form that people could take away. And as a committee, we, we deemed that was unacceptable, and it, I don't think it's gone forward from there. Uh, so, so, so basically, Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust are doing a three-year transformation program. As part of that, year one has essentially come to to an end, uh, and then it's the next two years. He he didn't say it's going to take two years for the leaflets to be produced, but they are in consultation with with getting them in at an accessible format. Um, but the help number that, that everyone was asking for quite rightly uh, has been shared and it, that is the same number that's been there for, for a few years so at least that's one thing that hasn't hasn't changed and won't be changing um, but I'd, I'd do their team and our team as in the comms team are working closer together um, but yes the, there is definite movement that can be can be made uh, and hopefully somebody will be picking that up uh, next year because I'm sure at least one of us will be on this committee next year to help push that. Uh, any further comments on the report? 
So the health, uh, agenda item number 11, uh, the health and wellbeing scrutiny work plan. Um, with it being the last meeting of the year, I'm hesitant to put anything on the future works plan as in the first meeting of the next year, it will be for the that committee to decide what they want to to do with their year. Um, Councillor People. Chair, yeah, much as I've supported you on many things tonight, I've got to disagree with you on that. We agreed some time back that scrutiny committees would not spend their first meeting appointing a chair, agreeing on a future work plan, uh, and then going home. Um, and so all the other scrutiny committees have accepted that whilst the new committee may reorder priorities, they should have something to discuss at their first meeting. And I think the tone of the meetings I've been at during the year would suggest that um, having something on a, a particular programme or a particular area is important. And given that we've all discussed um, the importance and centrality of, of tackling mental health, can I suggest that there is something on the work plan for the first meeting, if only because the fact that it's there will make sure that all the co new committee start by thinking about something that we say has been central. And I have to say, but you know, echoing Councillor Wade at a previous meeting where he was saying, well, we were told leaflets be ready. It seems to have taken nearly a year to do the leaflets. And certainly at a voluntary uh, sector partnership meeting the other week, there was some scepticism about the the progress being made in actually delivering the mental health. So, you know, perhaps it, it would be appropriate. Obviously, it's not for me to say and others have to accept it. But what I'm saying is I think you need something on your agenda that says mental health. Where are we? Where do we go next? Or where where are we at? so that at least the new membership can pick up where this membership is already and hear the concerns and, and issues. Thank you. Uh, with that being said, um, it would be about six months from Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust being here previously to the first meeting being in June. Uh, would the committee be happy with me going back to them and inviting them back to, to see what any movements have been made? Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you. Um, echo Councillor People's point. There's an easier way to re uh, to get this actually in embedded. Let's send a motion to full council at the AGM from this committee asking that next year's committee put that top of their agenda. And I was going to request another one on the agenda because I think it's something, nobody's fault, but something this committee's never thought to look at. And it is quite, actually quite essential. Uh, the council's healthy housing policy. The better quality build houses we drive in town with actually improves mental health and physical health if you're building the right heating, the right water, everything that goes into a house being constructed correctly affects people's mental health and it's such an important thing and I don't think this committee's looked at it in 10 years so I'd like to throw a recommendation in this committee look at the council's healthy housing policy next year. Thank you. Can I just say Chair that also has the advantage that, that a report on where that's at is internally generated and therefore you can guarantee it'll be available for the June meeting, um, whereas sometimes it's harder to get other things ready. That one definitely would be available. So, so, so what was that about the recommendation at full council for the next committee to invite Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust? Yeah, we um, we well, obviously it was to send a recommendation to full council at the council's AGM that this committee make that the priority for next year, and also look at the healthy housing policy at some point. Seconder, yeah. check. Can I just check with Councillor you and Councillor Cook? Is the proposed there are two proposals? One put on the work plan healthy housing because that's totally within the committee's remit, and secondly, or firstly, whichever way around, a separate proposal that mental health be recommended to full council as the number one priority for full for health scrutiny. But it's two separate proposals. I'll go for the I'll move a uh, vote for them both together. Uh, yes. Uh, 
Yeah, so because um, chair, that has the effect that both are therefore on the June meeting, because under matters referred by full council will come the mental health priority, and then uh, under the work plan normal agenda will be the other one. I hope that helps to explain what's going on in our minds here. Well, that comes to the end of the meeting uh me and the chair council claymore would just like to thank you all uh for being part of this committee through this last year and thank you to all the people that work behind the scenes at uh demo services and jody chief camera woman <laughs> cheers thank you thank you all uh close the meeting at 1841 thank you <laughs>